Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take another look at absolute value. And again, how does it affect certain equations? Now I think if I were to write down this equation here, x minus 7 equals 10, I think we could all agree that this is a one step problem that we would have to do. All we would really need to do here is to add 7 on both sides. If we did that, those 7s would zero out and we would know that x equals 17. So I wanna kinda of think about that idea for this equation here, but I'm going to now make one modification to that equation. Instead of it just being x minus seven equals 10, I'm gonna switch it and change it to be the absolute value of x minus seven equals 10. And so what we need to do and what we need to think about is, is what numbers can we put in here into x so that when we solve this out, the absolute value will be 10. So how we wanna solve this problem is we want to kind of split this problem into two. What I mean by that is I'm gonna draw arrows like this to show you the two different ways we're gonna solve this. I'm going to rewrite the equation twice. But here's what I'm going to do to this second equation. Because of the fact that the absolute value changes, right, changes what's inside to be a positive, I know that when we have absolute value answers, it's usually either positive or negative. Because of that, I'm going to then change what it's equal to to be a negative. That's the subtle difference we have to do when I add this absolute value bar around x minus seven. So all it does is it just spins off and creates two different equations. One where it's the original without any changes, and then the other where we now need to change what it's equal to, to a negative number. So now we just have to solve both of them. So again, I'm gonna solve this one just like I did over here. I'm gonna add seven, I'm gonna add seven, those zero out and we know that x equals 17, just like the last problem. But when you have an absolute value equation, you always end up with two different answers. Not always, but majority of the time you end up with two answers. Where you get that second answer from is from when you make that answer negative. So let's see what happens when I add seven on this side. Again, those sevens are gonna cancel out. I'm left with x equals, well, negative 10 plus seven would create negative three. And those are the two answers that are going to satisfy this equation that we started off with. And if you don't believe me, let's check by plugging in those numbers and seeing what it creates. So we know that x could be 17. Well, off to the corner here, if I change this x to be a 17, let's see what that creates. Well, 17 minus 7 creates the absolute value of 10, and we know that the absolute value of 10 is just 10. So perfect, we know that 17 works. Now let's take this equation again, but this time, let's plug in that x is negative three. So we plug in negative three in for x. We still have the minus seven. Well, negative three minus seven just creates negative 10 and look what happened. We have the absolute value bars around that negative 10, which is going to turn that into a positive 10. So we know that that answer also checks out. Okay, because of the fact that when you have an absolute value problem and you can either have a negative or a positive number inside the absolute value bars, most of the time you're going to end up with two different answers. All right guys, it's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.